So in this video, we're going to be learning about Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch makes it really easy to create an accurate search engine for your website. It can be a lot better and more accurate than MySQL and it's designed to scale horizontally. That means that you can spread your data out across multiple servers. So if you have lots of people using your website, it'll stay really fast because you can shard your data, which means you store different pieces of data on different servers and your Elasticsearch servers work together in a cluster, which means you can do your search queries in parallel, which can make them even quicker. So we're gonna be learning how to set up Elasticsearch today. So the first thing we have to do is install Java because Elasticsearch was written in Java. So because I'm gonna use a droplet from DigitalOcean, they have a Java tutorial here and all you have to do is install the Java runtime environment and you keep scrolling down and then you just have to set your Java home environment variable. So to set your Java environment variable, you just run this command, you'll get this string here and you just copy and paste that into this file here. And you just create a new line, say Java home equals, and you paste in that string. Then you just change your source variable and you're good to go. So now Java's installed, we can install Elasticsearch. So to do that, we just run this command, wget. We download that, then we install it here and we set it up as a service. So we run that command there. Then finally, we have to set up our configuration file, which is located here and everything above this is just comments. So here is the actual configuration. So we give our cluster a name. It doesn't matter what we call it. We give our node a name. It doesn't matter either. We set this to true because we're only gonna have one node in our cluster. So it has to be the master. We're gonna have one shard because we have one server and we're not gonna have any replicas because we still only have one server. By default, Elasticsearch is gonna listen on the IP address 127.0.0 Dot one and that's the loopback address which means you won't be able to access it from the internet so we're going to listen on 0.0.0.0, .0, .0 which will listen on every ip address on our server so that we can access it over the internet so we save our configuration file and we just restart Elasticsearch. and if we want to check if it worked we can just check the status of it you can see Elasticsearch is running and now we're ready to start adding data and searching for data. So Elasticsearch runs on port 9200. So if you go to that in your web browser, here's what you'll get because Elasticsearch uses a RESTful API. So if you send a GET request to this address, this is what you'll get. So because we're going to use a RESTful API, I'm going to use Paw, which is a piece of software that makes it really easy to work with APIs. So what I'm going to do is just go to GET and I'm going to run that. And now you can see exactly what we saw in the browser. So Elasticsearch has indexes and types. So an index is kind of like a database in MySQL and a type is kind of like a table. So if I wanted to create a new index or a new database, as I might call it, I would send a post request to the address of our server slash whatever I wanted to call the index. So if I want to create a blog, I could create a blog database. I could create an index for a blog, which means I would type in forward slash blog and I would send a post request to this address and I would run that. So you can see the index already exists because I've already created it. So what I could do is create another one called forum, run that and the index was created. So now I say I wanted to create a type or what we would call a table in MySQL. I would still send a post request to form to say I wanted to create a table in form and say I wanted to create a table called users. So what I'm doing is I'm going to the form index and I'm creating a type called users. And if I was to run that, you can see our new type has been created. So back to the blog example, let's say I've just created my posts type or my posts table as I would call it. And now I wanna add some data to it. Well, to add some data to it, all I have to do is send a post request and I give it the data that I want to add. Every post is gonna have a title. So I'm gonna say, here's the title. It's gonna have a body and it's gonna have an author. So now if I run this, it's created that item in the posts table. So if I wanna see all the items in the posts table, I can go to blog slash posts forward slash underscore search. The search endpoint is how we query our table. And if I query it without any parameters, it's just gonna give me all of the results. And before I run that, I have to just delete the body of the request. Run it now. You can see it says we have nine hits. There are nine items in the post index and what they're actually called are documents. So in MySQL, every post would have to have a title, a body and an author. But because this is a document based system, a post could have a title or could not have a title. It's completely up to us. Every post is completely individual from every other post. So if I scroll down now, you can see all of the posts that I've added. There's some empty ones that I added by accident. And what I want to do is start searching for posts now. So to search for a post, I have to query it and I have to use JSON to do it. So the first item I add is going to be called query. It's going to be a JSON object. So I have query is the first item. Then within that, I have another object called query string, which is also an object. And within that, I have another item called query. And here is where I put in the search query that I want to look for. So say I want to find any post with the word Francis in it. So that means any document with the word Francis. So in this case, the author has the word Francis. So I'm only going to return every post 
that was written by Francis, but it would also return if the word Francis was somewhere in the body or the title. And this weird format for querying the database is part of Elasticsearch's domain specific language. It's their own query language that uses JSON. Here is the JSON down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this and you can see it says hits total equals four. And you can see every one of these has the word Francis in the author of the post. So if I change this word to something like first and run that, you can see it only returned one post because there's only one post with the word first in the document. We can do a lot of things with Elasticsearch. This is just a really quick look at it. So this has been a really simple look at Elasticsearch, but this is a really simple search engine thanks to Elasticsearch. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.